so I've managed to put a covering on the back now which is a sort of collage torn bits of um, this sheet of, of uh, painted and gilded tissue paper it's mainly copper and a little gold but this is only the first stage I haven't finished it by any means yet um, but I need to give it a rest now to decide where I'm going next the other side again looking like incredibly um, sort of catwalk style camouflage really but it's going to head in the way of the the lichens so I will be um, tearing off the corners maybe at this stage I am open to all sorts of alternative pathways so I I might just leave a little bit of this white around the edge and then paint into it with um, with size and then add some silver leaf is coming to mind. I also want to go back to the churchyard and sit in front of the gravestone and just consider the next stage of this or alternatively leave it because it's beautiful in its own way. It, I was never intending to slavishly copy the thing in front of me just to take the patterns and colours and textures away with me and see what I could do with it. And I'm very pleased with this, especially the other side as well. I think actually I might um, slowly be bringing this to a close. And I need to decide whether I'm going to give it a coat of matte varnish or <clears throat> semi matte varnish or gloss. Lichens are not glossy, are they? Lichens are very dull. So possibly I'll go with the matte one there and possibly the glossy one there or maybe not I don't know honestly the thing is there's so many choices at this stage and I'm already now thinking about my next piece of work but this has to be concluded I'm going to put some PVA glue around the edge here just to flatten the, the paper which I've torn And then I'm going to coat over it, possibly with size, which then I can gild, or possibly with a few layers of thick white gesso. I think it's probably going to be size. I like the idea of the white gesso from behind, but I think from that side, it wouldn't make sense, really. So yeah, I'm going to do, this is just to flatten it a little bit. So I don't want it, I don't want it too frail. Let's see, like that. It's possible just to soften this and then flatten it a bit. Maybe not completely. Just so it won't have any sharp, rough edges. Just leave that in the drawing cabinet now. Yeah, this is good. This works quite well. There. I'm going to use size and um, paint around the edge of it, and then apply, I think, silver leaf. Yes. This is probably a much easier way to do it, actually. Just be able to stick it on top of the flower pot and slowly go around the edge. It's a very literally, literally, it's um, a 
delicate process and it, you only require to do, put a little bit on it. Actually, I'm putting quite a lot on here. But when the silver goes on, it will just catch it. And I think it's going to look very nice. So I'm going to add some size in certain areas here. And then I'm going to put on some gilding materials. I'm not quite sure which ones and where yet. I think I'll have to just build up some layers because using PVA glue does in fact dull it back down. And that is a look. And I've been looking at it and thinking, is that the look I actually want to end up with? And the answer is no, it's not. I want it to have an element of magic, really. And if it works, well, it's, it's experimental at this stage. I've also decided to put silver foil around the edge and build up the layers of size so that I get a really good definition of silver foil. And then I'm going to paint on top of that so it comes through. And the white areas, I will make silver and paint again with iridescent white on top of that. It's going to be a building up of techniques that, and, and ways that I learnt over many years making the jewellery that I have built my sort of livelihood on, really, which has now been shelved so that I can get on and do things like this and travel. I may come back to things. That's going to be good. I, I can see lots of areas here where I can build up a bit of depth and magic. And I can go on adding to it. So there we go. Again, okay, just putting in some of this. It's called variegated um, aluminium flakes. Wait. It's actually called something like Cosmic Flakes or, or something similar. Whoops. <laughs> anyway, it's perfect stuff for what I'm doing. So I can just, I can't remember, obviously, where I put the um, the size, the, which I need for, yeah, this is great, for sticking this on. So I've just got to sort of randomly chuck it on and hope it lands eventually on a spot where it will stick. And I'll do this. This is a way to do it, I think. It's really nice, randomised zapping up of the uh, background. I just want to see what it looks like when it's really kind of zapped up a few notches. Because the one thing you can do then is always knock it back if you don't want it. But I've got a feeling I shall love it, so I won't be knocking it back. Just put a little bit more on there. Yes, this is very nice. So this can take some time and I can take my time doing it. So then I just knock it all off. Well, all except the ones that are stuck. I'm going to use um, sepia and burnt umber, Dr. Morton's, uh, Dr. Yeah, Dr. Morton's. The hydrous one is more resistant to fading, but it's not really going to matter because it's going to be overlaid. So I'm going to start off with sepia, which is one of my favourite things for overlaying and knocking bright colours back. So let's see if I can do it there. Oh, it's just beautiful when you start adding it in. And it doesn't take much to add some magic. 
I can just can also sort of bring it in around the edges as well. And just kind of rubbing it over the surface because the surface is so knobbly and convoluted um, because I, you know, deliberately left fingerprints in it to create those little depressions. I'm going to leave that to dry and then add another layer or two of size and I've also got some copper and I will use the Robeson's um, watercolour which is one of my favourites and I've got then I've got these um, metallic powders which also work wonders so I'll do one step at a time. So this is how it's beginning to look uh, building up layers on layers on layers back is like that. I haven't done anything yet further with the back. I've got some size on which is dried which I can hardly see but now I'm going to try and just find some little places where I can put silver leaf. I've got lots of little bits of it. It Actually this isn't real silver this is what they call Dutch metal leaf so it's it's very thinly beaten aluminium foil and then it's I suppose they do something to make it brighter and more like silver but it's a really good thing for having in the in little flashes of silver and then if I put more size on in various places what I can do then is add a little silver foil run it over the edge so one side will be like a matty silver and the other side will be quite a brilliant silver and the thing about the foil is that you can paint on top of it with these um, transparent, I use Dr. Martin's watercolours, but they work because once everything gets blended in, it's all such a, an intricate web of different colours and flashes of things. You can't really tell what's what really. You would, Well, you certainly can't tell how it's made, um, which is why I like to do these tutorials in a bit of detail so that you can um, you know, all questions are answered. I tend to make shorter versions, little snippets and things for for Instagram, for example. It's sort of like a taster. And then if you like the, the look of it, it's something that we can go in, you can go into later because I will have it then on, on YouTube. At some stage, I would like to do Patreon as well. And I think I'll leave that to later on this spring and summer when I get out and about exploring. I've been doing a lot of driving around actually because although I've given up my jewellery business for the time being I've shelved it. I may come back to it, who knows, um, but I want the time that I've got now. It's not like I've got a death sentence or anything but I'm very aware that I spent 35 years making jewellery and that's been my business and now I've kind of shifted jobs to it. Now somewhere amongst here I've got also got some gold genuine gold leaf but I think I'm going to lay off that and just see if I can get some of this other gold down. It's, it's a nice one. All the, all the leaves come out of the packets and I tend not to know what's what so the silver leaf is always smaller. Now I did buy something off Amazon which alleged to be silver but it arrived in this larger format so I tend to think probably wasn't. 
apart from the fact that it also costs so much less. But there you go. Anyway, that this might be a similar um, Amazon purchase. It's a very sort of um, deep yellow gold. Very warm. That's okay though. That's okay. I can put a little bit more on that round here. Whoops, wrong side. Little bits here and there because that is a, a lovely area just to pick up the tiniest um, flashes of gold. That's rather too much. But I can always, if you, if you do put too much on, you can always go over it with size and then you can put something else on. It can be paint or it can be metal leaf or it can be this, which is what I'm going to use now, which is, uh, it's called Superfine Metallic Bronze Powder and it came from Robeson as well. I've had it for at least 15 or 20 years, so presumably they still do that. And I put it on with a fairly soft brush so that's a bit damp so that's not going to work so what shall i use shall i use i'll use a these are what i use for stencil brushes so what i use as a rule for pushing the gold into where i want it to go or the silver or the copper anyhow if i put some of that on there on the tip and then sort of put it in places it will actually only stick to where there is some size waiting and available, then I can pretty well wipe the remainder off with a, a cloth. But if I go around like that, that's quite nice actually. Well, not, I don't know, it's all oh, lovely. <laughs> I love it all. That's rather intense for what I've got in mind, but if I was to take one of these microfilm cloths which feel awful but actually work really really well and rub it in in places it gets rubbed away and in places where the size was it will stay like it stayed quite strongly over there but I'll just make a feature of that so that's the next stage and now I shall I shall put some clear watercolour up on now I think and for that I'm going to use this wonderful burnt orange which is another one of my favourite colours and just sort of it doesn't matter where you put this it just makes everything look amazing so I can put it over that great splodge of bronzing powder It's like being part of an alchemical process somehow or some sort of deep high-speed geological process and it comes up so if you put it over the browns they bring out the yellows i love it and i might also put a little bit of my favorite old sepia down there too You can see now where I love it so much on the silver and the gold. I'm always faced with a little bit of a dilemma at the end, which is how to seal it, because I don't necessarily want to put varnish on, because varnish just does its own thing. It's either matte or it's satin or it's gloss. And for something like this, which is just variegated shimmerings, I prefer not to give it a one coat blanket sort of look. So very often I'll just let it be. But this is a water-based paint rather than an acrylic. So it hasn't got a polymer in it. So consequently, if it gets damp, it will, it will move. So what I do as a rule when everything's dry is I use a product called Renaissance Wax. It's a silicone clear wax. And if I apply it very carefully, I don't lose the magic. Well, not all the magic anyway, it's a preferable way. So I'm going to leave that for a while now and come back later. <laughs> 